so we have discussed uh, basic concepts related to millman's theorem uh, in terms of parallel voltage sources and uh, the current sources so okay? we have divided it into two parts to understand it in a better way so now we will be solving some questions some problems and uh, from that we will try to understand it in a better way this uh, this whole theorem millman's theorem will understand it so this is uh, a circuit here where we have to find out this current i now if we are not familiar with millman's theorem then maybe we would have used any uh, you know other circuit theorem be it thevenin's theorem approach or uh, norton's theorem or superposition theorem or any other analysis techniques circuit analysis technique whether it is mesh analysis nodal analysis but the problem with that uh, is that it would lead to a lot of equations okay uh, two or three nodal equations will be there three mesh equations will be there also if we go for superposition theorem handling three separate sources and uh, it would it would unnecessarily be lengthy and when a solution becomes lengthy then there are high chances that there will be error if there is error in one step the whole uh, result the final result will be wrong so here if we use millman's theorem we can simplify the whole circuit and solve it very easily okay so here if you pay attention if you just exclude this uh, 10 ohm resistance if you look at these voltage sources connected in series with resistors then this is uh, we can directly use millman's theorem to find out the equivalent circuit so we know that we can convert this whole thing okay excluding the 10 ohm resistance in the form of this vth and rth and then there is this 10 ohm resistance <coughs> sorry so here now our task is to calculate vth and rth then we can find out i i will be simply vth by rth plus 10 millman's theorem is nothing but a combination of thevenin and norton equivalent theorem okay norton equivalent circuit so here vth is equal to we have already uh, we have already studied that in the basic concept part so it is v1 by r1 plus v2 by r2 plus v3 by r3 divided by 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 there are three voltage sources here 4 volt uh, minus 4 volt minus 2 volt and 10 volt and there are three resistance all of them which is equal 4 ohm so here we will substitute the values now here pay attention to another thing pay always pay attention to the polarity of the voltage sources okay here it is minus plus okay it means it is negative plus minus it is positive i have already uh, made a lot of videos related to basic uh, concepts related to electrical circuits so there uh, i have discussed about the sign convention associated with voltage sources current sources uh, voltage drops across resistors inductors capacitors everything so i will not go into detail about all of the all of those things again so here v1 will be minus 4 by r1 4 plus v2 will be minus 2 by 4 
plus 10 v3 which is 10 divided by 4 and here it would be 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 because r1 is equal to r2 is equal to r3 it is 4 ohm here so this will be here it is 4 minus 4 minus 2 plus 10 here it is also 4 which is 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is 3 here it is 10 minus 6 which is 4 by 4 divided by 3 by 4 so it is 1 so it is equal to 4 by 3 volt VTH is equal to 4 by 3 volt now RTH simply R1 parallel R2 parallel R3 okay so that is equal to by 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 that is equal to 1 by 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 is equal to 1 by 3 by 4 which is equal to 4 by 3 ohms that is RTH so directly I have done it okay R1 parallel R2 parallel R3 so we have got VTH which is 4 by 3 volt here de deliberately I have left the sign so that when we are clear about it we can put the sign VTH is equal to 4 by 3 volt RTH is equal to 4 by 3 ohm so I will be VTH by RTH plus 10 okay VTH by RTH plus 10 which is 4 by 3 divided by 4 by 3 plus 10 let us calculate it so it is coming around 0.11 okay round it off it is coming around 0.12 ampere okay rounding off okay so this is the value of this current i okay so if we would have used uh, the normal approach normal circuit analysis approach you know without using the millman's theorem basic circuit analysis technique nodal mesh or any other circuit theorem it would have been lengthy lengthy means errors so if we use millman's theorem we can simplify it very quickly lot of time will be you know saved and we can get the result in a quick way without any errors okay so this is the first question related to millman's theorem so here we are with the second question related to millman's theorem so again we have this circuit here consisting of uh, voltage sources along with resistors connected in a parallel arrangement so here we have to again find out this current pi so directly we'll solve it using millman's theorem we all know that whenever such an arrangement is there we can calculate or determine the Thevenin equivalent of it so the Thevenin equivalent we can replace it with that VTH RTH and then we have this one kilo so our job now is to calculate VTH and RTH so VTH is simply V1 by R1 plus V2 by R2 plus V3 by R3 divided by 1 by R1 1 by R2 1 by R3 so here 
V1 and R1, V2 and R2, V3 and R3, they are the voltage sources and the resistance connected in series along with that. So V1 is 36 volt, R1 is 18, V2 27, R2 9, V3 minus 6, R3 3 kilo ohm. Again, pay attention to the voltage polarities. It is very easy to make the mistake. Okay, most of the students what they do is they directly they write it V3 as 6. Always pay attention to the polarity. It is minus plus. 36 and 27 they are plus minus. Okay. So VTH will be 36 by 18. Twenty seven by nine minus six by three divided by one by eighteen plus one by nine plus one by three. This is two plus three minus two divided by here it is eighteen one plus two plus this will be 6 okay so it is 3 by 9 by 18 and it will be 3 into 18 by 9 okay this is 6 volt VTH is 6 volt okay so here it is 6 volt VTH and it will be like this if it would have been minus then I would have written minus plus okay so plus minus that is 6 uh, six volt then we have to calculate RTH RTH is simply R1 parallel R2 parallel R3 so RTH will be 1 by 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 which is equal to 1 by 1 by 18 plus 1 by 9 plus 1 by 3 yes 18 9 and 3 kilo ohm yes that's correct so that will be again the same way as here 18 1 plus 2 plus 6 which is 1 by 9 by 18 this is equal to 2 kilo ohm. RTH is 2 kilo ohm. so VTH is 6 volt RTH is 2 kilo ohm. okay so here RTH is 2 kilo ohm VTH is 6 volt this current I will be VTH by 1 plus RTH both in terms of kilo ohms so it is 6 by 1 plus 2 6 by 3 which is equal to 2 ampere I is equal to sorry it will be milliampere because it is in kilo ohm always remember it is not ampere it is 2 milliampere because volt ohm ampere and volt kilo ohm milliampere when voltage is in terms of volts resistance is in terms of ohms current will be in terms of ampere when voltage is in terms of volts resistance is in terms of kilo ohm current will be in terms of milliampere so always remember it don't write it one ampere by mistake I said it is ampere but it is kilo ohm that's why it is milliampere Okay, so I is equal to 2 milliampere. Okay, so this is the second question related to Millman's theorem.